Hello, come in. Hi, nice to see you again. I've been looking again at this. Is I, I think I showed you this before. This is the it's the Book of Common Prayer, uh, which is a wonderful um, book that was used for so many centuries and is still used in the Church of England for worship. This I think I may have shown you this before. This, which happens to be an 18th century copy, belonged to Maggie's father, my father-in-law. And uh, did I show you this this wonderful look? He was he got this when he was an undergraduate at Oxford, and it's got what's called edge painting. I think I showed you that before. That's Christ Church, Oxford. You have to sort of fan the pages out, and then there's the painting. And when it's closed, you wouldn't see it. It's sort of invisibly there. Anyway, uh, come over here and I'll show you. We'll put it on this. I have this nice Indian book rest that I've had for a while. Um, the reason why I had this out is I'm getting ready for the launch of my, uh, my book, David's Crown. In fact, do you remember last time you popped in, I ended up um, saying how going from Belloc to Byron had suddenly brought me back because Byron had written about King David and his hut. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. So, um, the way this book works is that I read and prayed through the Psalms here in my father-in-law's book. And then I wrote poems in response to each of the Psalms that were all kind of linked together. So I just thought it might be fun to show you how they're all in a sequence, how they sort of work as a sequence. In the olden days, the way they divided it up, you see the way this says the Psalms, day five. So each day you'd say a certain amount of Psalms, some in the morning and some in the evening. And here's the evening of day five. And it starts with Psalm 27, Dominus Illuminatio, to... Uh, the, the Lord is my light. Anyway, it's a beautiful, beautiful psalm. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And it's all about dwelling in the house of the Lord. It's a particularly moving and beautiful psalm. And I particularly love this bit, verse 9. My heart hath talked of thee. Seek ye my face. Thy face, Lord, I will seek. Hide not thy face. So you read that one. And then you go on here to Psalm 28. And um, that's the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart is trusted in him and I'm helped. My heart, I love this, my heart danceth for joy and my song, and in my song will I praise him. And then it goes on to uh, 29. And 29 is the fantastic psalm about the idea of hearing God's voice throughout nature. You know, it is the Lord that commandeth the waters, it's the glorious God that maketh the thunder, and the voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. Uh, the voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness, the Lord shaketh the wilderness of Cades. It's wonderful. Um, so, you can imagine me sitting and reading these psalms. And then what I did, come over and have a seat. I, I wove my own poems, not translations of the psalms, but a kind of poetic response, a kind of how do I play these now? Um, I'll just, um, I hope my throat's going. Um, I'm having a really lovely cup of coffee here. Can I say thank you, by the way, for all the coffee you've, uh, all the coffee you've sent over to me. That's been so encouraging and, and helpful. And uh, I have to say, to get through this lockdown and to do the writing I do, I drink lots of strong coffee. This is in my Samuel Johnson coffee mug. Um, which I got at Johnson's house in Litchfield. So just to give you a flavour of this, let me read you just those three psalms we looked at, 27, 28, 29. And if I read them in sequence, these three poems, you'll see how the, the corona form, as I called it, the links, how the last line of one poem is the first line of the next. So just relax and enjoy these. Um, it's a little sample of what this book is sort of like. Each poem is 15 lines and they have a, a nice little rhyme scheme where the middle line of the first three lines rhymes with the next one and so on. So, Psalm 27, Dominus Illuminatio. Oh, let me see with his eyes from now on, whose gaze on beauty makes it beautiful, who looks us into love and looks upon his whole creation with a merciful and loving eye. My heart has said of him, seek out his face. I've sensed his bountiful presence shimmering behind the dim veil of things. 
that presence calls to me, calls me to tremble at the brink and rim of lived experience, and then to free myself of fear, to trust him, and to dive right off that brink into his mystery, into that deep and holy sea of love in which the living worlds all float and swim, to dare each moment's death that I might live. 28. Ad te, Domine. To dare each moment's death that I might live means both repentance and a plenitude of grace, means letting go to let him give. So Christ, I beg for that beatitude, the grace to trust and let go, to receive from your unsparing hand the amplitude of your beneficence, to have a heart that dances to the measure of your music, even here, where evil seeks to part us from each promised good, and where the sick and sickening cacophony of hate might deafen us or wound us to the quick and break us down. May it not be too late to turn to you again and start to live. Call us, O Christ, and open up the gate. And then lastly, Psalm 29, Eferte Domine. Call us, O Christ, and open up the gate. Call us to worship with your mighty voice, the voice that sings through rivers in full spate, the voice in which the forests all rejoice, the voice that rolls through thunderclouds and calls the deep seas and steep waves, the quiet voice that stirs our sleeping conscience and recalls us to the love we had abandoned, leads us through the parting mists of doubt or falls upon us like a revelation, pleads with us upon the poor's behalf, blazes in glory from each burning bush, and bleeds out from compassion's wounds. The voice that raises our drooping spirits till we dance for joy, and gives us too a voice to sing his praises. I guess that final term there, that his voice gives me a voice, is really how this whole book has worked. That I hear the voice of David, if you like, the poet of the psalmist, psalms, and I hear that poetic voice of the psalms, and then that kindles my own poetic voice, and um, I make something in return. Of course, that's how all reading works. You make books out of books. Poetry arises out of a delight you already have in the poetry that's there. So I hope that gives you a little flavour. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll send you that if you want to be part of my launch on this, I wish we could just be all in a lovely big room together and drinking wine and, and you know sharing good things to eat and hearing the poems read out loud. But I'm going to do a virtual thing and um, I'm going to have some really good guests and everything. So I'll let you know about that. Uh, that's going to be a week today. Uh, should be should be good fun. Anyway, uh, as I say, thanks again for the coffee too and thank you very much for dropping around. Cheers. <laughs>